Hi folks, let's look at this simple problem relating to the theory of being. So hopefully you've had time to watch all four lectures at this point. And hopefully by going through this particular problem, this will more or less reinforce further understanding in terms of the concepts I've talked about relating to the theory of bending. So the problem reads, the following diagram shows a complex asymmetrical I-beam subjected to a bending moment that causes the beam to sag. The beam is made from a material with a maximum allowable tensile and compressive stress of 30 mega newton per meter squared and 45 mega newton per meter squared respectively. So we've been challenged to undertake the following. Illustrate graphically the tension and the compression in the beam section. We've also been tasked to calculate the centroid of the entire I-beam section. So this would be a good time to look at my video relating to centroid sensibility in products. Moving from there, we need to also calculate the total area moment of inertia of the I-beam or the second moment of area of the I-beam. And once we've done that, we then need to proceed to calculate what the maximum allowable bending moment is being applied to the beam to meet or satisfy the conditions above. So let's have a go working through this problem. All right, so let's now look at this particular problem. So as shown in the slide uh, prior to this um, work along, we've been instructed to carefully decentralize for the given section of the problem. So we've got some form of what we call time section. But before we proceed to actually carefully the every moment of inertia, we need to carefully where the central is accounted for the given shape. So if you look at the shape very carefully, this is a lot of material at the bottom. We're going to be a shift of the centroid also to where the section has the most material or has the larger sectional profile. We could be on the bottom. So we're looking at the centroid like we did around 90 millimeters. Okay? So let's go there. Another thing I also want to bring to our attention is the behavior of the bending moment on the given beam section. So from the question, it says that the beam section is sagging. So let's assume that this ruler is the beam. So based on how the structure is constrained, so let's assume that it's constrained at the end of the beam section. And we're assuming that our load is normal, okay, or transverse to the plane, uh, to the plane of the beam. What's going to happen is, it's going to develop what's called a positive shear. It's going to cause the beam so sad, so it bends inwards. So the upper section here is being subjected to compression because it's caving in or bending in, and the outer of our hair is being stretched out, thus in a state of tension. So this is certainly what's happening to our being. So once we've calculated the area of the motion or the second moment of area, then the next part will be to identify what is the measure of the maximum beam moment. Ensure that number one, we are within the limits of the design limit in terms of tension, which would be 30 MBA or 30 millimeters per meter square. And the other section, which would be in the state of compression, will exceed the magnitude of 45 MBA or 45 millimeters per meter. Hopefully that makes sense. So, if you have a bear like so, it looks like a bit smiling. That is called sagging. And what you have to do is down the right cell, wherever the upper part is in a state of tension. And the bottom part is in a state of compression. We call this hogging. Okay? So let's start. So the first thing that we have to do is we're going to segment the beat into three sections. Well, so. I'm going to call this section section one, call this middle part, so the web, so the upper flange, section one, the web, section two, and the base flange. 
session three. So to determine the central of the given session, since it's symmetrical, okay, in terms of x, we don't necessarily need to track where it's in at. We've also identified the point of reference. So in terms of x, x would be from the point of reference within half of margin of 20. So x would be equal to 16 millimeters. And so that's very straightforward. You can calculate for it to prove that that is the case. But we know that our coordinate in terms of where one would be would be along this axis of symmetry. So, and once we're able to count for the position of y, the coordinate system will be declared in terms of where the centroid is from the form, which will also indicate where the neutral axis will be. So the neutral axis will determine the plane to which the band is stressed is equal to magnitude of zero. So you need to emphasize that. The neutral axis is also the decision of mass the shear stress of the beam. But we'll talk about shear stresses in those later on down the line. Okay? So let's start. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to calculate the area of each segment of the beam. So let's A1 be equal to the area of segment 1. Okay? So what are the dimensions of segment 1? So if you want to, you can draw that. And let's do for segments. Okay, so from the diagram, note that it spans its images and the thickness of the man is 10 images. Okay. So now that we know that, we can easily calculate the area. So since it's a rectangle, it's simply the area of a rectangle. So therefore, A1, you can see the length, time, width. You just call it that, or you call it. Um, with trying to fix. Doesn't really matter as long as you understand the concept. So this is equal to 16 by 10 in that bit, 600 millimeters squared. So that's fairly straightforward. So let's look at segment 2. So in terms of segment 2, we can also draw the form, which is absolutely. I would normally advise that you do represent the Torian in given problem when you go through a mechanics or engineering science related problem and using a design concept. I would recommend you do that. Right? Okay. So, in terms of the left, we're going back to our diagram. Since the flange and the web and the bottom flange are more or less 10 millimeters thick, what we do is we deduct the thickness of the flange, which is the 10 plus 10 millimeters, we deduct that from 180, and that will give this length to 160. Okay. So this is 160 millimeters, and this band is, well, thickness is 10 millimeters. Therefore, Area 2 for segment 2 is equal to 160 times 10 and that gives 1600 millimeters square. Okay, this is for segment 2. And we'll need this information to help us calculate the second moment of area. We'll be coming back to this down the line. So for segment 3, Control that also. That's a pretty nice data. Okay, this one using the dots in the you have to find the sensor where the centroid is likely to be for the event section. So the stands are the same thing, and it's only this thickness. Therefore, there is three segments for the one you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've calculated the areas. So the next part is to calculate the position of the centroid. So 
Well, let's bring back our initial daughter of the session. So since it's got the segments and this segment is tangled, what we can do is we can both drive the most and it's a little better for the corner of the segments to identify where the long goal center is from the segment. So the first thing that we do is introduce our first article, move it to the next intersect of the central position. So well, this is the central position for segment. So let's pull that to the right. We do likewise for the web. So, the argument, do another argument with it, set. Here, pull that to two. And we do likewise for the upper flange, segment one. This is where this is painted, so let's pull that to one. Okay. So what we're going to do is, from X, we're going to determine where that distance is to the central. Okay? So since C3 is more or less halfway of the thickness, so we know that Y1 okay, is equal to 5 millimeters. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. C2, another C2, the more of the to half the height of the section, which would be 90. Okay. So again, fairly dreadful this stuff. You know what this is from there. There. Yeah. Let's call that Y2, that we can see. Right? Then for C1, we know that the distance from there to there is 10 millimeters. So if it's a pencil halfway, that would be 5 millimeters. So therefore, the difference between 180 and 5 would get what? The 175. So the distance from the reference axis to C1, so let's call that Y1, that's the Y2, sorry, the Y1 and the Y2. 180, 185, no, it's 185. So we're almost there. So what do we know? So in terms of segments, one, any one, you can see 600 meters. Okay. And the distance to the centroid. To 175 meters. Segment 2. Calculate the area A2 to be 1600 meters squared. Y2 to 90 meters. And for segment 3. A3. It's 1200 million squared. My theory is five millimeters. Okay. So, what we're going to do is, in terms of the sum of everything that we do, I will present this in table format where it makes it very clear. And I will recommend to you actually do it. Okay? You know, it's very easy to proofread your work and to double check and to identify um, instances of uh, errors. Okay? So the next part will be to now apply the centroid formula. So, the centroid coordinate, we're looking at for y, for y. So from, um, I think, lecture three, we'll talk about centroid of two blue objects. This is equal to p2 over a2. What is QT? QT is the total first moment of area. And we're going to be doing a lot of exercise relating to um, centroid. In 2D, 3D, and in set of instances, look at user, the equation, and uh, such as that. So, all that will come down. 
care of, uh, of the segments. Innate is a total area of the eye section. Right, so that's very straightforward. Therefore, my prime and my bar to FUQ, Q, I1, Q, Y2 plus Q, Y3, all divided by A1, A2, plus A3. So someone will be asking what is Q, but Q is equal to the product of the area times the y coordinate with respect to their reference um, frame is defined uh, and that's basically what q is so y ball is equal to so again you can you can calculate this uh, perfectly if you want to so this would be equal to so we're going to start off with q1 y or q y1 here that this is equal to 600 times 175 plus 1600 times 90 plus 1200 times 5. All divided by the total area is equal to 600 plus 1600 plus 1200. Right, plus 9 units are so let's bring our trusted calculator to do the right computation. So 600 by 105, that gives 105,000 plus 1600 times 90, that gives 124,000 plus 12. All divided by the total area is 600 plus 600 plus 1200 and that's equal to 3400. So let's add up all the data units. So 105,000 plus 134,000 plus 6,000. That's equal to 255,000. All that divided by 3400. So don't forget that R is millimeters. And this is the 75 millimeters. So we've identified the Y coordinate. So we bring our diagram back. So when we bring our diagram back, that's the stator. Okay, the central will be closer to where there's greater mass in the section. And the greater mass below 90. Right, so we're looking at central in the bounds of the right? So this is good. It's still going to go. It's not X. Fine, it's not like hot. So we've identified where the new chance is right this way. The new chance is the small central. Okay, so let's call that N, A, N, A. So above the line, okay, above the initial axis, this section of the beam will be experiencing compression. Below, the beam will be experiencing Tension. Okay? So, tension and compression. And there we have it. So, we're now going to look into calculating the second moment of error, which will be the after this one.